Yeah, yeah it, is, it is cold. We are living in some very, very cold times. But I would say also, although it is hot meteorologically, I would say it is cold. Yeah, it is, it is cold. Oh, he needs a meal! A meal! A meal! And, and, and Marcus's Marcus penis, penis is, is, is really, really light, light, thick, and only about five, five inches. <laughs> Gay! The gaydar detector has been activated. Please remain in your seats. Example, yes, he has a birthmark on his butt. Where I'm from, that's, that, that's kind of gay. Why would any man spend this much time talking about another man? Oh, he needs some milk! Some milk! Some milk! Um, I, I'm, I'm admitting that I asked questions regarding the sexual relationship. You want to see the little pee-pee pics? That you want to see? You want to see the little wee-wee pics? You said Ohio's penis looks. You said Ohio's penis looks. You said Ohio's penis looks. I did not just ask her uh, about the size of G. Craig's genitals. You mentioned you wanted to forward every text and pictures of him and his private. Do you mean private as in his genitals? That's the question I asked her. Because I wanted to have... Proof. I need evidence. Do, 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 do. Evidence. Do, do. do you see the evidence? Do, do. Evidence. Do, do, do. I need that evidence. I, I needed evidence. I, I need evidence. I need it. Mm -hmm. oh, he needs some milk. Some milk. Some milk. I think that is the first time I've ever seen a grown man singing about another grown man's genitals. And I've, I've never, never seen, seen a man, man so, so excited, excited on seeing another man's genitals. It was his genitals. Y'all need, need to start, start asking, asking some questions. questions. Yes, it was his genitals. I asked this lady, and you have pictures of this? Answer, survey says, yes. I, I want, want to have, have proof. proof. I need <laughs> evidence. <laughs> Evidence. Do, 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 do you see the evidence? Do you see the evidence? Evidence. I need evidence. I need evidence. I need evidence. I need it. And so, I got it. I got it. Gay! He needs some milk! Some milk! Some milk! For those of you who don't know who that was, that was Pastor Seiko Woods. Seiko Woods is known as a Christian content creator and who is also known as a reseologist, as he calls it, which means that he will save all of your private emails and texts to him. Unfortunately, it's not just limited to texts and personal emails. He will also record your personal conversations with him just in case he needs to use it against you on a later date. These antics are also extended to his friends just in case they decide to ever turn on him or disagree with him later. So now that you have a little bit of background on Pastor Seiko Woods, the reason why I wanted to do this video is because there's some things I want to talk about. Now, he has already been exposed for some of the things that he's done, but I want to elaborate on certain things that has been personally bothering me. And I feel like he's very, very disrespectful. And one of the things is the sexual content that he speaks about. And... It's highly inappropriate for him to ask young ladies those type of questions. And my question also is for his wife, Sharon Woods. Why would you let your husband talk with other young ladies about sexual things and, sec uh, and sexual um, members of the male's genitals and things that they're doing in the bedroom like why do you think that that's okay sharon 
See, Sharon, I'm going to get to you, woman, because you have been flying under the radar and, and you are, I think you're a nut. You're, you and your husband, y'all are nuts. And not only y'all nuts, y'all are freaks. Both of y'all are freaks for you guys to, to do the things that you do and for you to applaud your husband in talking to other females about sexual content. And my other question, Seiko, is what makes you think that having um, a, a picture of a male, of a male's penis is going to help in identifying and proving anything. And it's not like you can put it here on YouTube. So why are you asking for all these are all, all these pictures? I'm like, are you are you asking them from all these females to get get all the pictures so you can kind of zoom in and, and look and, and compare and make sure they all look like? I mean, like that has nothing to do with proof. All you have to do is ask. Okay, was there was this a, a intimate relationship? Maybe you can say that and keep it at that, just so you knew the degree of the relationship. But you don't have to ask what they're doing in the bedroom. You and your little freaky wife. What do y'all be doing with those pictures anyway? Are y'all sitting up in the bed just looking through the pictures of the, of everybody's genitals? I mean, y'all are sick. It's sick. And you're nasty. I think you're nasty. And I think you're trifling. You're trifling. And your wife is trifling. But let's just go to this next clip so that everyone can see just how nasty you both are. So, this next clip is about one of the young ladies that Seiko Woods was in contact with because he had a series of exposing G. Craig Lewis. And one of the young ladies wanted to help Seiko expose G. Craig Lewis for his adultery. But this one particular young lady, she decided to back out because Seiko Woods was asking her sexual questions about G. Craig Lewis, about personal, like, in the bedroom type questions. I mean, like... I'm like, really, Seiko, like, what are you asking these ladies? Are you, like, asking them, like, well, how's he starting, y'all, face up or face down? Is he is he a, a rabbit or is he a marathon runner? I mean, like, what are you asking these ladies? Seiko's a narcissist, and a lot of times, most times, narcissists have sexual issues. Like, they have porn issues. Like they are addicted to porn. And that's why Seiko is so sexual and he wants the nitty gritty of all this stuff. Stuff that people wouldn't even think about asking or talking about. But but because Seiko's a little freak, he can't wait to talk about it. I, he also talked on the phone with this other person. I'm sorry, I went off topic a little bit. And you know, he was talking about, yeah, the wife came home and, and the the girl's butt was in the air and you could just smell women everywhere in the room. I mean, he really goes into detail. I didn't I didn't want to post that clip because first of all, it's not clear on what they're talking about and I couldn't understand it really, but but Seiko kind of summarized what they were saying and it was nasty. It was nasty. And only other nasty people would engage in that. And you guys, you followers really need to consider who you're following because I'm telling you, Seiko is not of the Lord. But let's, let's, let me play the clip of this young lady. Oh, so real quick, the young lady must have talked to another girl. And, and, um, so the girl gave that information to Seiko and that's and she's just relaying what the other girl who backed out said I just wanted to quickly set that up for y'all something else she went on to say that the part that the reason why the lady who backed out of talking to to say uh out of talking to Seiko uh, early in the year supposedly had inappropriate relations no excuse me she went on to say that the reason why the lady who had backed out of talking to Seiko earlier in the year supposedly had inappropriate relationship with G Craig Lewis 
It was not that she was afraid of Craig, but that she felt uncomfortable, quote unquote, with Seiko because he had asked her sexual questions in regards to her inappropriate sexual relationship with G. Craig. I asked what kind of questions. She said she did not know. I'm just saying what was told to me, but apparently Seiko got too personal and it scared her off. You see, this just shows that it's not the females that are bringing up the the intimate sexual um, conversation to Seiko. It's Seiko that's prompting them to tell intimate details that are unnecessary to know. And this is coming from a pastor, a pastor, a so-called pastor. Also, for some of you followers of Seiko and other pastors here online, did you know that over 80% of pastors and ministers are in sexual sin by watching adult content on the internet? Yeah, that's a statistic. And that's a very true statistic. And just because they preach against it and seem like they're all holier than thou and that they don't do any of that stuff, trust me, that's why there's hypocrites. They'll preach against it, but yet they themselves are doing it behind the scenes. So I, I'm telling you guys, you don't know these people. You don't know these people. Stop following these people here on YouTube. I follow no one. I don't care. I follow Jesus Christ, God, because I just know how weak the flesh is. and I'm going to follow the Lord. But you guys don't know these people. You don't. So let's just move on. This next issue that I'm going to bring up from Seiko happened a couple years ago. But the reason why I'm bringing it up now is because Seiko still to this day brings it up. And it also bothers me because of because of how he brings it up and how disrespectful it is and how he's purposely trying to humiliate this person. And it also shows more about how his character is, how he's not operating at a pastoral type of character. Um, he, he just runs his own show however he sees fit and he twists the Bible all the time. But but I really feel like he is wrong for this. And I actually believe his son is wrong for this. But in order for you guys to understand what I'm talking about, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of backstory to it. So if you guys just hang on, it's going to make sense in the end. And I'll, I'll try to go as fast as I can. But I have to set it up first for you to really understand um, where it's going. And it, again, this is to show Seiko's mentality, his character, and and how he affects other people. So here's the gist of this story. A couple years ago, somebody inboxed Seiko in regards to their daughter meeting his son. And so the Seiko contacted his son and his son was interested in the young lady from the other parent. And so the parents were trying to get these two kids to, to you know, like each other or introduce each other. And so each of them, each of the, the kids, well, they're not kids. They're 29 years old, almost 30, but they're kids. And they decided that they liked each other. And Seiko's kid and this other couple's kid, they started having a long distance relationship. And from that relationship, the young lady had cheated. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that later too. And so his son took her back and they continued on with the relationship. And so the son came to another, went to go meet the young lady. Cause like I said, they had a long distance relationship and I don't think they've met. So they met for the first time at her parents' house and he stayed with her at her parents' house and they were all meeting each other and he stayed there for like four days. And so after Seiko's son left, the young lady told told Seiko's son that she really wasn't interested and the connection wasn't there and, and, you know, they're not the right fit. And so Seiko's son felt some kind of way and he was upset. And I'm going to tell you how that all played out. And I also don't want to be accused of taking this out of context. So I am going to show clips of, of what I'm talking about, but I wanted to give you kind of more of an idea of what you're going to be seeing. And, um, 
And, and again, this is going somewhere. This is going somewhere. But I, I just want to show just how, how he moves. He, I mean, he... Seiko, I, I have to show you how he moves and how he, he affects other people. But I want to show how much he got into this situation and made it worse. And... Uh, it, it it's just a mess. So here you're getting ready to, to tell you you're getting ready to hear Seiko tell you a little bit about their courtship. And I'm gonna play a clip commentary, play a clip commentary, and until I get to my point at the end. So hang in there. I got a DM. I got a DM from Brenda Dolan Lindman, and basically the DM, which she deleted by the way. I wonder why. The Bible says the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. She slides up in my DM and she starts to basically sell her son, sell her daughter to us, to my to my wife and I and said, uh, I know this sounds awkward. I know this sounds weird or whatever like that. But, you know, um, uh, I have a daughter and she's beautiful and she's this and she's that and she's so sweet and she's so that. And, and, and I believe your son would be a perfect, a perfect fit. And perfect for my daughter. My son is 29 years old, almost 30. He desires to be married. He desires to be in a committed relationship. He desires to have someone that's going to love him, respect him, honor him as he does them. Is that a tall order to feel, ladies? So the conversation in the relationship was going well. Fast forward. Later into their relationship. A situation had occurred involving my son and Brenda's daughter. And so um, my son received a message from, from the young lady and she had explained to him what had occurred. And, and bottom line, um, they broke up at the time. My son was hurt. My son took her back. Of course, we had conversations and I told my son, hey, you got to make the decision for yourself. So I sent I sent Brenda a text message because my son was hurt and I and, and he told me he had a conversation with the young lady and um and I said hey I said I think we need to need, need to talk and um I said um you know let me know when we ever could talk. Bottom line, she said she couldn't, you know, because she was dealing with her daughter and all this other kind. I said, okay, fine, fine. Um so then next thing we know, my son is blocked from from their social media pages, just just removed. I mean, now now some of you may say, "Well, what's the big deal about that?" It's about the principle. So I so basically, you know, they they stopped unfollowing him. They they basically you know unfollowed him. They deleted you know their 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 profile page or whatever like that. They just stopped. They just unfriended him. So <clears throat> the situation with with this uh, with my son and this young lady ended because after they had decided to go forward Brenda had invited my son to Virginia to, to come meet their family and I told my son okay that's your call if you want to do that my son spent the weekend there my son speak the, spent the weekend there my son had um, he from what he told me he had a great time Sunday night my son leaves and heads back to uh, heads back home Brenda's daughter heads back to where she lived, to what was shared with me. Bottom line, there was no communication from the time from Sunday up until uh, today's Wednesday. I say maybe Tuesday or maybe early this morning. But bottom line, uh, my son was reaching out to his to his girl. No contact. Okay, y'all. Hopefully y'all are following that. I know it's starting out kind of slow, but trust me, he's getting ready to take a turn for the worse. Again, this is to show Seiko's character and how he operates, not just here on YouTube, but, but even away from the platform of YouTube. And all this happened on Facebook, but, but he got upset because of what he feels like this young lady did to his son. And, you know, and earlier, Seiko said he hasn't get into his kid's business and he's all up in it. I I don't know. Maybe you guys can talk to me in the in the comment section, because I I, I didn't think that people got into people's business like that. Like I, I would advise my kids 
or whatever, but I don't, I would never get that involved. But Seiko is upset and his son came to him being upset and this is getting ready to take, like I said, take a turn for the worst. And so um, I'm going to still make some commentary, some, some uh, of my takes on it and, and um, it is going to get a little graphic. But but I wanted to show this, like I said, to show how how Seiko's mind is. And hopefully some of you followers will wake up. He said, Yeah, I'm 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 done. I can't I can't do this. We already had this conversation, but boom, whatever. Okay, fine. And um next thing I know, son tells me, yep, it's over. They're, they're done. You know, she basically said she can't do it anymore. Her words to my son were. Um that he's not the one for her. He is not the one for her. Okay. Let that sink in. He's not the one for her, but he was the one trying to keep the relationship together. Okay. Well, hey, grown man, grown woman, do what you do, whatever, whatever. My son, my oldest son, my boy, who's a grown man, and I got to keep saying that because I, I don't want people to understand or misunderstand rather that I'm trying to come to my son's rescue. I'm treating him like a child. No, my son's a grown man, a full grown man, a whole grown man, whole grown man. So Seiko is getting ready to read all of the text messages that his son has sent him uh, from a private conversation that his son had with the girl that broke up. And you know what I think what happened? I think that Seiko's son went to go visit her and her family and they saw some things that they didn't like about Seiko's son. And of course they had to like not say anything while he's there and they had to to not make it awkward. So the so they 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 continued on until they left and they probably all got together and be like, uh, that's something's not right. Something's off about that boy. And I think that that's what happens. And sometimes that is what happens. You, you meet someone, but I think something happened there that they didn't like, and we're getting ready to talk about that. But again, my point is to, sh is to show how narcissistic Seiko is. And he'll talk about, oh, my son is grown, my son is grown, but yet he's taking taking his his son's uh, battles on his own and making it more public than what it it should be. And at first, I really went in on Seiko's son because my thinking is, hey, you're 29 years old, dude. You're running to daddy to take care of your problems. You should be taking care of that yourself. But then after I read something that the young lady's mother wrote about Seiko's son, it kind of made me feel bad for Seiko's son. So I kind of, I deleted it um, because, you know, I felt some compassion for him. Um, even though he's 29 years old and I disagree with him sending all his private text messages from that young lady that was supposed to be for his eyes only. But he gives it to his dad to make this even more of a public issue. So again, this is gonna play out. You guys just need to be patient. Let it play out because then it's gonna, it's gonna, um, like I said, get to my point. But it's not really gonna be a point unless you guys had the foundation of what's going on first. I cut a lot out, so I'm trying to express everything that is that is being said, so you don't have to be here for two hours. You really want to talk about what happened? That's what you really want to do, Brenda? But see, one thing I keep is receipts. I got written. Oh, oh, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Erica cheated on your son. Oh, I'm a, okay. Let me let me let me go ahead and just read it then. No problem. I'll read it. Let, let's let's read how my son is a lie then. Because this is this is the text message from your your daughter to my son admitting that she cheated on my son. This is this is from your daughter. Right here. I wanted to call you and talk to you about this, but I can't stop crying. Been sobbing the entire day. You haven't known me long enough to witness my self-destructive tendencies and know my history of self-harm.
Mm. And I'm giving you that as a context, which I hope and pray might keep you from leaving me. As you have every right to last night, two of my friends who are dating initiated a threesome on their couch while we were drunk. I didn't want to do it and have zero attraction to either one of them. But in my stupidity and self-destructive nature, I engaged. I am so nauseous typing this. I hated it and went to throw up thinking of it. You want to go on? I can continue on. I think I will. Feels like a nightmare. I'm going to wake up from soon. Feel like a nightmare. I'm going to wake up from soon. I'm sitting here telling you about something I did, which I didn't even want to do. That was a complete betrayal against you. The word humiliation actually comes from a Latin root that means dirt. And, uh, and basically when somebody is, uh, is trying to humiliate you, they're trying to bring you down to a dirt level. You know, that's where we come up with the term, I'm going to treat you like dirt. Basically, when we talk about humiliating, it means that you're trying to bring injury to another person's dignity and their self-respect. And you're trying to create a feeling of powerlessness in other individuals. Now, again, I want you to stop and think. The, the narcissists that you've been around, have they ever done anything like this? Now, I, I want to, uh, uh, to, to take you through uh, multiple illustrations of how narcissists will attempt to shame you. Uh, let's keep in mind that, uh, that one of the things that, well, when I say shame and humiliate you, one of the things that's most common in the way they do it is not only do they shame you privately, but they actually want to publicly make sure that others know of whatever defects you have. And of course, they're going to grossly uh, misrepresent you. And that's part of the humiliation. The, you know, humiliation is uh, the result of them publicly exposing what they think should be your shame. But wait, there's more. Kier. I have been literally been throwing up today over this, physically throwing up. Part of me thinks I did this because I tend to ruin the good things in my life as a way to hurt myself. And in this case, it was something that doubtably, uh, that doubly, excuse me, hurt you. It goes without saying that I am sorry. I have been on my hands and knees sobbing over this, over you and over the likelihood of losing you over my bizarre and idiotic mistake. I'm waiting for my son to admit that he was the one who cheated on your daughter. They can make jokes at your expense. Uh, they can offer sarcastic remarks about you and toward you. This is the same guy that was that was helping me when uh, Brenda Lindman, a.k.a. Karen, was trying to slander my son. Y'all remember that a couple of years ago, right? Try to slander my son because of her, her daughter being a thought. You know, giving giving free fellatio to whoever she wants to when she's drunk, supposedly, allegedly. But, but this woman publicly tried to slander my oldest son and said that my my oldest son was an alcoholic and a drunkard, and said he could not go a day without without drinking and getting drunk and all this other kind of stuff, and which was a lie. And so I had to deal with her. And had she had just shut her mouth then maybe I would not have to talk about her daughter and what, what her daughter puts in her mouth. Just maybe. Had her mama shut her mouth, I would not have talked about your daughter what she was putting in her mouth. But no, she had to keep running her mouth, and so therefore her daughter got exposed. Their, uh, their humiliation is meant to create trauma. <laughs> These individuals, they know what they're doing. It's called abuse, by the way. Now, they won't call it that way, but they want you to feel traumatized because that, that keeps you very much in a uh, beneath kind of situation. Narcissists are in a battle. Now, they, they try to make it uh, seem as though they're in a battle with you about the difficulties in their life, but actually they're in the battle with their own internal demons, but they can't say that. They can't admit it and they don't have enough self-awareness to go into that space. And so what they do is they use you as a means of diverting their tensions that they don't want to have to address internally. That What's the issue? Why, why, I, why am I, you know, uh, responding the way that I'm responding? I'm the one that's evil. Okay, Brenda, that's okay. But you can't answer the question though, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's the reason why 
I responded and I'm responding the way I'm responding. So everybody know this is Brenda Lindman. This is Brenda right there. Everybody knows who Brenda is right there. Say hi to Brenda. Okay. So Brenda puts up a post today. Now, let me just go and give you the context on what I put up. This is what I put up today, this morning. And again, I put up posts in relation to things that I experience and things that I see and things that go on. I do that, right? Um, yeah, okay. So I put up a post earlier today, and I said, ladies, there's a weight, compa a weight capacity planes can't exceed in order uh, to be clear for takeoff and climb to its desired altitude. The same is true in relationships. In order for the man to be able to soar and reach certain goals and desires in his life, he can't be weighed down with unnecessary baggage that will impede and hinder him from attaining that objective. In order for the man to carry you, he, you must be willing to lay aside any unnecessary baggage that will hinder you from, uh, from hinder him, excuse me, from taking you to the destination he wants you to go. Hebrews 12.1. If you're unwilling or unable to meet his standards or requirements, the respectful thing to do is to inform him rather than trying to shove or smuggle your baggage in overhead compartments or under the seat of your life. He won't allow you to take him down with you in flames for your refusal to comply or meet his standards due to your unnecessary baggage. That's what I said right now. Made a few few other comments. Um. And the problem with this is, the problem with this is, I guess she felt some kind of way about it. Brenda did. And so she puts up this post. And here's what her post says. Ladies, when you meet a guy and he already has red flags, don't ignore them. Listen to your gut. Getting to know someone happens in person, not over the phone. When he starts a conversation by telling you his dad beat him so much as a child, he was unable to see him for 10 years. That's a red flag. who are divided over how to discipline their children. Now, our next guest called Child Protective Services on her ex-husband because of a beating he gave their son. Now she's afraid to leave her, her child alone with him. Please welcome Catherine to the show. Thanks for coming on. Now, Catherine, what did you see that actually made you call CPS? Well, Queen Latifah, when my son, who was seven, came home from a summer visit two years ago uh, at the end of the day, to take off his clothes, I noticed black and blue marks across the lower part of his back. And to me, that was totally unacceptable. So I decided to call CPS. He, you say he services. came from a summer vacation? Yes. With his dad? Yes, he okay. stayed with his dad for the summer. So what happened after you called for Child Protective uh, Services? They came out and took their pictures and started a case and whatnot. Uh, talked to him also and uh, talked to my son as well. Um, it's just his beatings to me are, are too long and too hard. I can show you if need be. Please show me. Sure. Show me what your what your ex-husband does. Oh, dag. Oh, oh, yeah. oh it started to sting just to look at it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's say you know he'll hit him on the back. You know, and on the back. Well, it's if going for the butt, but if the hands get in the way. Oh, the oh, man's well, getting torn Whatever up. get in the way. But let's just say we hit him again, and let's say he falls on the floor. Then it's get up. From the floor? Get up so again. So kick, kick little Ricky over. All right. Now, well, what would one do once little Ricky, Ricky gotta is get on up. the ground? You gotta, well, of course, he gets up on his own, but he hits him again. It's till he feels he's had enough. I think we should just hear what Catherine's ex-husband has, has to say since we have gone this far with it. Seiko, come on out. I might come to you. How 
do you say that I be my son when every time I talk to him on the phone, he wants to be with his dad? He tells it's funny. You it's funny how you tell me. He's scared okay. to tell you. Now okay, you that's can fine. take okay, him. Okay, but before that's, that's, that's fine. What what about the incident with these bu these marks that, on his that, back? This okay, you want me marks. to show you what, what 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 happened? I can show you what happened. You sure, got a belt show me what happened. The belt is right there. Okay. Now, I never intentionally go for my son's back. All I go is for raw behind. Period. Okay. I don't go for no arms. I don't go for no no. I don't do this. Take all your clothes off. Strip naked. I don't do that kind of stuff. Okay. That's my that's my son. That's my seed. Okay. I love my son. So, so if I if I tell him if I tell him to stand there or whatever like that, this is what I do. That's one time. Okay. But hold on. But hold on though. Okay. That's one time or whatever, but depending on the circumstance of the situation, I'm not just beating my son, just, just bludgeoningly beating him like that, okay? But now I find it, I find it kind of hard to believe that all of a sudden when he goes has a problem in school or, or whatever, she calls me, I drive eight hours to discipline my son because he's acting I'll up. Call okay? you if I call you because I feel if, if my what son, if my son is so, if, I feel, I feel I'm so dangerous, or if you feel that you're so scared of me disciplining my son, why would I drive eight, eight hours across the, the, the state or whatever, to discipline my son, if you're so scared for me beating him. That's my son. First society, of all, society. I never, what happened with your, other, never, with your stepson? Uh, my oldest son got a call from the teacher stating that he had been acting up, and he had been acting up from, for a while then. In class, that's cool. And so we decided, he decided we'd give him a spanking. Fine, no problem. Well, to me, it got to be too long. And so I decided, well, I'm going to have to go in here. And I opened up the door, and my son was nude with his hands tied. And I told him, I told him, okay, now his hands tied, that's not true, that's not true, that is not true, that is not true, that is not true. When he has to be drunk during every conversation, that's a red flag. When he cannot communicate until he's had alcohol, that's a red flag. When he needs you to message him every 30 minutes because he doesn't know what you're doing while telling you he has nothing to do, that's a red flag. When he meets your parents and spends more time in the bottle than getting to know them, that's a red flag. When your friends see the red flags before you listen carefully, they see something you didn't pick up on. When he puts you on a video call with his parents asking for your intentions after only spending four days with their son, run and don't look back. Now, some of you may ask the question, how do I know that this was about my son? I'm glad you asked, ladies and gentlemen. Very attentive audience. This is your reason why. Brenda Dolman sends me, sends me a text message and attaches the post that she puts up on her page and then sends it to me. Same text or same post just sent to my text. And she says, quote, I've never met. I've never been happier to meet someone in person in my life. The best thing about this journey, recognize the red flags. You are so silly, Seiko. I was warned about you from the other public. Uh, I was warned about you from other public figures that I've never met in private messages that I never met in private messages. I, too, ignore the red flags. BCV starts with you. And she says here, BCV starts with you, my dear. And this was today at 1022 a.m. Didn't respond to her. Let a fool be a fool. So I just wanted to say something in closing about that situation. That young lady did not have to tell Seiko's son about what happened, about when she got drunk and some inappropriate behavior took place. And later her mom actually said that her, her drink was tampered with i don't know the truth of that i'm just telling you what she said but either way that young lady went and admitted what she did to seiko's son and she didn't have to tell him at all because they're long distance and there was no way for him to know unless she admitted it and he accepted her apology and got back together so but seiko's bringing that up and bringing that point over and over and over again when his son already forgave her for it and got back with her after that so so that's all he has but the the uh the result is is that Seiko just felt some kind of way with someone breaking up with his son and I actually feel sorry for his son I I had narcissistic parents and I know 
how challenging that can be. Even when you're an adult, you still have to fight all those wounds that they put on you, all those emotional wounds. And I'm sorry, I do believe um, that young lady's mother, that Seiko's son is a heavy drinker. I do believe that. And that's my opinion. And I think that Seiko has really done a number on his oldest, especially his oldest boy. And I feel like his son doesn't know how to tell Seiko because Seiko can't hear. He can't hear anything about his fault. So there's a lack of communication for his son and Seiko. And so there's a disconnect there. And the only way for his son to help cope is to keep drinking those emotions that are bottled up inside of him because he can't go to his dad. And according to uh, that young lady's mother, when he went to go visit them, that's all Seiko's son did was drink and drink and drink the whole time. So I felt bad about that. And I do want to bring awareness to narcissism and what it does to people. And I will be praying for them. And especially Seiko. Seiko really needs a lot of prayer and deliverance. They all do. They all do. So yeah, I'm going to call this stuff out. And yeah, I'm going to disclose everything I need to disclose when necessary. Period. And you don't have to like it. Now, the next person I want to bring up is Michaela Murphy. Now, Michaela Murphy is about 21, 22 years old, and she actually used to support Seiko Woods. And just to show you again the type of character that Seiko Woods has, even when they were friends, when they were talking with each other over the phone, he was recording her without her knowledge. And this is what Seiko does. He doesn't care if you guys are cool with each other, friends with each other, or just acquaintances. He's or doesn't even even have a reason to record you. He's just going to record you just in case you ever decide to turn on him and disagree with him. And that's what happened with Michaela. She used to support him. And somewhere along the line, she was like, mm, I don't want to support this guy anymore. So she must have saw something that she didn't like that finally brought her out of supporting Seiko Woods. And... He, he does this to the young people. He has no, no bounds. He has no mercy. And for him to record a 21, 22 year old young lady without her knowledge is, he's a scumbag. It's really scummy. And Sharon, I want to go back to you, Sharon, your husband who's doing that to young ladies. You, you two have four girls with each other. And the fact, Sharon, that you don't even talk to Seiko about putting a young lady's conversation or putting her on blast publicly when she has never done that to him. The only thing that Michaela has done was she has written comments about her disagreeing with Seiko. But she's never made a video about Seiko. She just, she just flipped, as Seiko would call it. She changed. And we have a right to do that. Some One day we're cool with each other and then something happens, something pops off, and then we're not. That's life. That happens. And, but Sago can't take that. He takes that very, very personal. And he wants to do everything he can to get back at whoever flipped on him. And like I said, Michaela doesn't even have a platform and he still put her on blast, being as young as she is. And Sharon... For you to have those four girls and let your husband do that and do that to that other young lady about the things that she was doing in private that was very embarrassing. For you to let your husband go online publicly to do that. you I'm telling you, Sharon, something is not right with your brain. Something is not clicking with you, honey. And I'm telling you, I hope your followers start to see the, the messed up brain you have. Both you and your husband, you too have something mentally, spiritually wrong with you. So you're getting ready to hear the young lady confront Seiko, who used to be cool with Seiko. And for someone who's 21, 22 years old to have 
that ability to articulate what she wants to say so well is amazing. I I I think it is is it's amazing. I don't even think I could have said it any better than that young lady. And, you know, Seiko thinks that wisdom comes with age. I'm sorry. I know a lot of old fools. But I'll tell you what, Michaela, wow. she She's a smart young lady. And I'm going to let you uh, see see the interaction. And then afterwards, I'll, I'll, I'll comment. But I wanted you to see just how how much she said to, to Seiko. And Seiko, oh my gosh, Seiko just could not take it. it this... What she said to him bothered him so bad. But I'm going to talk about it later. Well, I was reading your email, um, Michaela, but I want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to the uh, to the audience. Um, let people know who you are and what brings you on the, the channel. Go right ahead. You got the floor. My name is MS Murphy. Um, I'm here to say one thing. I listened to the beginning of the video. Um, right after I got home as I was on my way home. And I heard you make a, a specific statement that when you use the verbiage, cam up or shut up, that you're either speaking to somebody who's unreasonable or who has e uh, leveraged false accusations and just don't want to cam up. So what it sounds like to me is that you've already decided, pre-decided that what I'm saying is, is false, holds no weight, and you aren't open to any further reasonable discussion at all of any type, regardless of how much you say, come on, you know, moderated discussion. And to be honest, I don't know this Michelle, um, Miss, Miss Michelle McGee person, I, I don't, but she's wearing one of your shirts. And from what I know, moderators on discussions are supposed to be neutral parties. And so from already from my view, it just doesn't seem like it's set up to be a reasonable, fair, uh, fruitful discussion. And also, You've already decided now that, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but you, you, you are playing petty. You're saying, oh, you aren't appealing to scripture at all. When I said that my comment started with, can you show me the BCV? You go back, yeah, it doesn't start with that. It starts with sense. You call yourself a BCV man. That's straining that and, and you know it and it is petty. Um, so it's, if that's how we're going to play, I, I'm not even going to engage it. You said bear witness to the wrong and I think that's been done. Okay. It's been done uh, not only by me, but it's been done by people who have tried to have a reasonable discussion with you in the past as well. You don't listen, ever. You always find a way to justify, explain everything away that somebody said to you, no matter how many faithful su a Christian suggests the same. You take exception to every, absolutely almost everything you always have a better way. You aren't quick to hear. You're very quick to anger. You chatter. You make yourself hurt all the time. And you do, you just truly don't listen to try to connect with people, relate to people, to try to even see how well, what they've experienced or seen has even impacted or shaped what they're saying to you. I saw a comment of you last night. A brother said, I'm not, I'm not getting anything out of this discussion. Your reply was so thoughtless and so heartless. We'll close, your door on, we'll close the door on the way out. And so you say you're an elder, which, I mean, honestly, you're not. You don't have a church. You don't have a flock that you tend to, that you discipline, that you feed or shepherd. But that's not the heart of the pastor um, to say, oh, close the door on your way out and subpoena you here. So I think it's pointless at this point. And so... You, uh -huh. So you so you, you don't you don't wish so to you, you don't wish to engage. Nope. nope. Go ahead. So you, you basically are making accusations, and you don't want to have a conversation about it. Is that what you're saying now? The conversation has been had. With who? With you. I had it on your page. We've had it in the emails. Well, let's read the email. We tried to have, I, it, it's been tried to. We tried. Well, let's to read. Let's read, let's read the emails then, uh, Michaela. And last, let's, no, let's read, the read the emails. And, and, and matter of fact, if you don't mind, if you don't mind. Um, let's do this. Why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself? How old are you again? Seiko, you can read the emails at this point. I'm done. Have I'm, I'm asking how old are you? Are you, are you just going to leave off the channel? That's what I figured. So, so ladies and gentlemen, once again, as you can see, right? 
as you can see. So wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. If I have, if I have receipts, I'm going to present them because the last thing I would want to do is allow people to, to be further deceived by my, by my actions and, and the, all these extreme statements, you, you never listen. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out if I if I never listen. You see how Seiko brought up her age? He already knew how old she was, but he wants to bring it up so that he can try to discredit her and be like, well, she's a young person. She doesn't know anything because he's on a live and he knows a lot of people are watching and he knows that she made him look like a complete fool. And I'm telling you to Seiko could not take it. So next you're getting ready to hear him read a post that she wrote about him. And he um, said this in a different live because it was still bothering him. He still, he can't stand that girl because of what she said. He She embarrassed him so bad. Wow. But I'll, I'll, I'll let him tell you. Let's continue. Michaela Murphy responds to Leah Johnson. Notice what she says. <clears throat> he, meaning me, has been behaving this way for years, and his YouTube Facebook page is full of such behavior. He's so brutal and violent with his words. He uses his words to demean, degrade, and disrespect. Okay. All right. He hurts people with his mouth and cares not because it's just his personality and preference. I, I'm, I'm still waiting on the evidence. I gave her the opportunity to, pro to prove it. She couldn't. She made her cameo, and then she dipped. He's always arguing or fighting with another believer. Stop the lies. Stop the lies. His spirit is eager to oppose, and he never listens. To, you hear all these extreme statements? But let me continue on, because I never get done. His spirit is eager to oppose, and he never listens to the concerns, rebukes, and reproofs of others. He is known for always being right, never being wrong, never admitting sin, speaking carelessly, constantly talking to or about others with, with contempt and in a negative sense. I did not know the Holy Spirit was a female. I did not know that. I did not know the Holy Spirit was a female. Learn something new every day, I guess. Hmm. Speaking carelessly, constantly talking to or about others with contempt and in a negative sense, aggressive behavior and hostility. His online behavior and videos testifies against him for them. Michaela talked about style and all this other kind of stuff and, and, and say that my videos are this and that, you know, okay, but I, I think she kind of, rem I think, let me see, I think she probably forgot what she said a year ago. Here's some preference issues, which really seems like a lot of like, what I'm seeing, I guess, because, I don't know, like, <laughs> Because, you know, you, you have a, a harsher approach than, than some people, mm -hmm. I guess. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's triggering to some folks. Mm -hmm. Like, like uh, you were saying, you know, you're serving spicy food. You don't like spicy food. Then, you know, I got to eat over here. Like, I was uh, talking to my older brother early in the car. Um, I was telling him about, well, I didn't directly mention your wife's life, but that's what I was uh, referring to. I was t uh, watching her live uh, yesterday, and, like, she really... Like, encouraged me because, like I said, I don't have a, like, a platform as a, a, a content, you know, creator, mm -hmm. but I'm a local performance artist. I, I'm in college for music and, you know, I, I do entertainment around here. But uh, this is interesting. This is, this is, this is this young lady, 21 years old, 22, 21, she's still, she's still inexperienced, but thinks she knows more than me. Think that she has been around the sun longer than me. Think she has longer tooth and longer teeth in the gums than I do. And her disrespect was made evident and clear when she was on my channel. The sheer blatant disrespect that this young lady had toward me on my channel, had I done that, all hell would have broke loose. But yet she gets applauded. Yet she gets cheered, yet she gets kudos for lobbing lies and slander and disrespect towards an elder. I'm old enough to be your daddy. I just want to interject real quick. Seiko, you cannot really believe that people are going to respect you with the, the low-down scumbag stuff that you do. 
And I'm not going to keep naming it because I've already talked about it. And another thing, isn't John MacArthur um, your elder? He's like, what, 84? And you're like 52, 53? Isn't he your elder? But yet you keep giving all these videos after videos after videos talking about that man publicly and trying to shame him. But yet you um, aren't giving him respect, are you? And he's respected by many, many people. So you can't be a hypocrite and also think people are going to respect that. And so I just want to kind of bring that to your attention. If you want respect, you need to do respectable things. And you can't, like I said, be a scumbag and think people are going to honor you. But this young lady, this young fool, and those who support her, they lauded her. They applauded. They cheered her. They even mocked how she was, uh, they was mocking me, how she was disrespecting me, making videos. Like I said before, Seiko cannot take that such a young person really embarrassed him. He cannot take it. And he also couldn't take that people were applauding her because she had so much wisdom in the words that she was saying. And Seiko also was upset that she didn't give him a, a chance to cross-examine her and try to embarrass her back. And so he couldn't take that. And of course, that's what he says that, oh, you know, the wicked will flee when no one's pursuing them. That's his go-to. But yet he said other places that he doesn't argue with fools. And that's what God says. We shouldn't argue with a fool. She said what she had to say and she left out. But I want to end by saying this about Seiko and um, to you followers as well, I hope you really reconsider following Seiko. Seiko is not of God. And I'm telling you, he's demon possessed. He has demons. That's who's running his whole show here. And I, I'm telling you what I know. This man is not filled with the Holy Spirit. He's being used by the enemy. And I really hope you take that to prayer and really ask God. And I know a lot of you followers, you guys are in your flesh. And I think deep down inside, you know, he's twisting scripture to try to fit his narrative. And um, I really hope you reconsider your own hearts because you all, you followers, are what is fueling Seiko to be the way that he is. And when you guys keep plotting him in the comment section and in his live, you just help grow his nonsense. So I really hope that you reconsider and take this uh, videos and other videos that are made against Seiko into consideration and really look at yourself. And I want to talk about you one more time, Sharon. Sharon, shame, shame, shame on you, woman, for you allowing your husband to talk about these young women the way that he did publicly, especially when you had four girls of your own and you know full well you wouldn't want no one to do that to your girls. And I'm telling you, something is not right with you sharing it. Because both you and your husband are in a delusion. And I really hope that people like Michaela Murphy and others will wake up and see y'all's nonsense. Because that's exactly what it is. And I hope I don't have to make another video about you, Seiko Woods. But if you do something that's out of pocket, I will take the time out to, to keep these videos coming. Because someone like you should not be thriving in a Christian community. And judgment will start in the house of God. So I hope you guys consider that.